Hello and welcome to another episode of The Thriving Metabolism, where we discuss everything that impacts your hormones and metabolism so that you can take control, repair the damage and lose weight consistently without making yourself miserable in the process. It's my mission to empower you so that you and your metabolism thrives and you never have to go through diet misery again. I'm Louise Digby, registered nutritional therapist, weight loss expert, and founder of the Nourish Method to Lasting Fat Loss. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about poop. And when me and my team are working with clients, we do an awful lot of talking about poop. And I've come to realize that I don't talk about it enough on the podcast and on social media. And it's a really big topic and it's a really important one because we can learn so much about our health and what's going on in our bodies from our poop. And we all poop. And so, you know, it's something that we can all tune into. We can all look at our poop and figure out what's going on in our bodies and where we might need to be paying some attention to, to support our healing journey and our weight loss journey. I've spoken about the gut in a fair amount of detail before, and I wanna recap that a little bit because what's going on in your gut obviously affects what comes out. And so when it comes to weight loss, the gut is so, so important. We really underappreciate the role of the gut in weight loss. And you know, when I'm talking about the gut, A lot of people think of the word gut as mean having a gut, but I'm talking about your gastrointestinal tract. So from your mouth all the way to anus, there's lots in between and there's lots that can become imbalanced and that can, all those imbalances can have a really big impact on lots of things like how we absorb our food and our nutrients and how we eliminate our hormones and even potentially reabsorb hormones. There can be a lot of inflammation that's generated in the gut, toxins that are generated in the gut, and there can be disruption to our immune function as well. So these are all things that in one way or another can have an impact on your weight loss journey. And so, so often when we're working with clients inside the Nourish Method, we find that there are gut issues going on You know, when they weren't even suspected in the first place, you know, there there weren't obvious symptoms of gut issues like diarrhea or constipation or bloating. I mean, we do regularly see those symptoms in so many people that we work with. Things like bloating and constipation are so, so common. But even when someone comes in and they have no obvious gut issues, you know, so often someone like that still has gut stuff going on. And we find that in the tests that we run. And so what that means is that for the vast majority of women that we work with inside the program, we start with working on the gut. Because if your gut isn't functioning properly, then you're gonna be more likely to have deficiencies, more likely to have a high level of inflammation in your body, more likely to have disrupted hormones, sluggish liver function, um, and various other issues. And all of those things are important because, you know, having balanced hormones is really important for weight loss in so, so many different ways. I've spoken about it in many, many previous episodes. So if that's news to you, then make sure you go back and listen to the various hormone episodes that I've done. Um, You know, absorbing your nutrients properly is really, really important because we need nutrients to make hormones. We need nutrients to regulate our immune system and inflammatory responses. We need nutrients to support our liver detoxification so that we can get rid of toxins and waste products and hormones and things that we don't want building up in the system. Um, And also in the gut, the balance of bacteria is so important because if there is an imbalance of bacteria, then that can cause a high toxic load, it can cause inflammation, it can slow down gut transit, meaning that you're more likely to reabsorb things that you should be eliminating. Um, So there's all sorts of reasons why the gut is really, really important for our overall health and weight management. And time and time again, we come back to the gut when you know things aren't going as we might expect from your typical eat less 
exercise more approach. Another way that the gut is very involved in your weight loss journey is to do with your thyroid. And if there's inflammation or immune dysregulation that comes from imbalanced gut bacteria or food intolerances, inflammation, then that can cause your thyroid to become more sluggish. And one way that that can happen is you can um, have an autoimmune reaction, which is where your immune system kind of attacks your body. And that autoimmune reaction can attack your thyroid and slow it down. And your thyroid is really the master hormone when it comes to your metabolism. It controls the speed of your metabolism and therefore the speed of fat burning. So if there's imbalances in your gut or let's put it the other way around, if you know you've got thyroid issues, there could well be imbalances in your gut. And so often when we're addressing thyroid issues, we really need to be focusing on what's going on in the gut. So as I said before, your poop really reflects what is going on in your gut and therefore can tell us a lot about what's going on, what imbalances there might be and therefore what you might need to do. So let's start with regularity. How often should we be pooping? Well, once to twice a day is the general consensus of how often we should be pooping. We should be having two, one to two complete bowel movements per day. If you're having fewer bowel movements than this, then it may be that you are not eliminating properly. You're um, you're potentially not taking in enough fiber, enough fluids, um, not moving enough. It could be that you are um, experiencing imbalanced gut bacteria and yeast, which is slowing things down. And as I said before, that's not ideal because the slower things are moving through the gut, the the greater the uh, kind of toxic load, the more toxins we're going to be absorbing from those waste products that we should be eliminating, the more hormones we're going to be reabsorbing. Because when we get rid of toxins and hormones, the liver processes them, but it excretes them into the digestive tract via the, um, via the gallbladder and the bile. So that is one way that we can end up reabsorbing and, and developing imbalances in our hormones and various other things. So we want to ensure that we are having regular bowel movements every day, if not twice a day. If you're going more than that, so long as it's, you know, kind of whole fully formed bowel movements, then that's fine. In terms of the stool itself, it should be as say fully formed. So not really hard, but not, you know, soft or, or definitely not liquid either. So we want it to be like a nice smooth sausage. And if it's like that, then you're doing a great job. Your gut is probably fairly happy. Um, But if it's at the other ends of the spectrum, then there may be some issues there. You know, if if it's not solid enough, then that could be a number of things. It could be that you're not digesting your fats very well. It could be that there's food intolerances or bacterial imbalances. If you're constipated, it could be that you have bacterial imbalances, lack of fiber, lack of fluids, and things I mentioned before. Could be linked to underactive thyroid because that slows everything down. So it can be a bit of a vicious cycle with your gut and your thyroid affecting each other. If there's undigested food in the stool, then that is pretty clear. It tells us that you're not digesting very well. You're not breaking down your food properly. There shouldn't be undigested food in your stools. And the first thing to think about here, if you're seeing undigested food in your stools, is are you chewing properly? Because food, once it leaves your mouth and goes into your stomach, it should really be unrecognizable. You know, it should be broken down into a puree. You know, we tend to think that Chewing our food is just a way of getting it down and getting it into the stomach, but actually it's the first and very important step to digestion. So, you know, we have digestive enzymes in our saliva, and so if we're not masticating properly or chewing properly, we're not mixing that food with the enzymes, which are gonna start that food breakdown 
and we're not manually breaking down that food with our teeth. And so that means that the rest of the digestive tract has to work a lot harder if we're not chewing properly. And then add to that other potential imbalances, which could be lack of stomach acid or lack of digestive enzymes, then that is going to also contribute to poor breakdown of food and there being undigested food in the stools. And if you've got undigested food in the stools, then you know, you're not going to be getting the most out of your food. You're not going to be getting the, as many nutrients out of your food as you could do. And it's more important than ever for us to get all of the nutrients out of our food because the food we eat now is very depleted in nutrients compared to food 50 to 100 years ago. And there's a few reasons for that. You know, partly because food is more processed now, but even fresh food or um, you know unprocessed food is lower in nutrients than it used to be because of artificial fertilizers and modern farming methods. And, you know, it's a quite a significant decrease in nutrients in today's food. So we want to be getting the most bang for our buck and we really want to be making sure we are absorbing those nutrients from our food. So chewing your food properly is one of the best things that you can do to support your digestion. And, you know, you've probably heard about chewing food properly in the context of weight loss before because you know the more we chew the slower we eat and the more likely it is we're gonna realize that we're full um you know before we overeat but it also helps with your weight loss by helping you extract more nutrients out of your food and that helps with your hormones and lots of other things in your body Another thing to look out for is whether your stool floats or sinks. So if it floats, then it's a sign that it could be quite fatty. Um, if there's like a greasy film on the water, then again, that can be a sign that it's quite fatty. And that's not a sign that you're eating too much fat. It's a sign that you're not digesting it properly. So our stools shouldn't be fatty or greasy. We shouldn't really have any fat in the stools. We should be able to absorb that properly. So fat digestion is um, done by our digestive enzymes and our bile. And so if you're not digesting fat very well, it could be that you're not producing enough enzymes, you're not producing enough bile. That's a complicated subject because there's lots of things that affect that, including your liver function. But another thing that could be contributing to poor fat digestion and absorption is imbalanced gut bacteria and yeasts. A common thing that we see in our clients and you know in lots of people is where the bacteria and yeast that's supposed to be in your large intestine can actually overgrow up into the small intestine where we don't really want it to be you know the small intestine is where we do a lot of absorption so if there is a layer of bacteria and or yeast in there then that's going to interfere with our absorption so we want to make sure that um you know that isn't happening that's something that is difficult to figure out on your own in terms of identifying whether you have that and how to get rid of it because you know that's something that we use tests for and we look at the individual to figure out the individual approach but there are things that you can do to help prevent that and to kind of help your gut in clearing the small intestine um, and one of the things that you can do is try to leave at least four to five hours between your meals. So trying not to snack too much. Um, and part of the reason for this is because we have a process in the small intestine called the migrating motor complex. And this is a, a process that gets switched on when we haven't eaten for four hours. And it's where the small intestine kind of clears bacteria and debris um, and, and just kind of gives itself a little clean. And that doesn't happen if we're eating too frequently. So if we're having breakfast and then a few hours later we're having a snack and then a few hours later we're having lunch and then a few hours later we're having a snack and then a few hours later we're having dinner and then maybe we're having another snack, then you know perhaps we're getting like an eight to nine hour period overnight where we're not eating then our body gets a very small window of opportunity to actually do that MMR, the migrating motor complex, and clear that small intestine. So trying not to have snacks between meals is a good way of supporting the clearing of that bacteria and debris in the gut and improving your absorption of nutrients and fats and proteins and everything. Um, so again, you know, you've probably heard about 
asked, you know, or had questions about whether or not you should be snacking for weight loss. And, you know, there's lots of reasons why we might decide that someone needs snacks or doesn't need snacks. But in general, if you're having three good main meals, well balanced and substantial main meals, you probably don't need to snack between, you know, to keep your blood sugars balanced, to keep your energy up and to keep your gut bacteria nice and clear, um, or at least in the small intestine anyway, then not snacking is usually suitable for most people. Okay, let's talk about smell. So it's normal for bowel movements to smell a little bit, but if they're very, very strong, very, very pungent, then that could be a sign that maybe you're not digesting things very well. Um, you know, particularly proteins, um, you know, they can go through something called putrefaction, which is where they're not being digested properly and they're essentially starting to rot or ferment in the guts. And that can be a very smelly thing. So poor protein digestion is one thing that can cause smelly bowel movements. And one thing that you can do, again, is chew your food properly. And another thing that you can do is look at having apple cider vinegar before meals. Apple cider vinegar, I've spoken about it before because it's great for supporting your blood sugar balance, but it's also really great for improving or topping up the level of acid in your stomach. And it's the acid in the stomach that really does the bulk of the protein digestion in our digestive tracts. Lack of stomach acid is really, really common. You know, we hear about having too much stomach acid because of heartburn or acid reflux all the time. And when people get symptoms like that, we assume that it's too much acid, but actually not enough acid in the stomach can cause exactly the same symptoms. And a lot of people find that those symptoms are eased by topping up their stomach acid with something like apple cider vinegar. And so the apple cider vinegar will help to top up your stomach acid. That will help you to break down your protein better and help the rest of the digestive process overall. So that's something to think about where if there's undigested food in the stool or if there's very smelly bowel movements also if there's some sort of greasiness or if the stool is floating showing that there may be too much fat in the stool having apple cider vinegar and chewing thoroughly should help with both of those things and help you to have a better digestion and absorption of your nutrients so that's probably pretty much all you need to know about your stools. So don't be afraid to have a little look in the toilet bowl and check out what's going on with your stools because you can learn a lot. And you know, it is important to take a look as well, you know, not just for your weight loss journey, but for your overall health. You know, we should be looking out for things like blood in the stool. And um, you know, if we ever see anything unexpected like blood or mucus, then it's always worth having a chat with your doctor just to check that there's nothing more going on. Okay, now it's time for my listener's question. And this week, we've got a question about supplements. So this lady said, I'm making my way through your podcast, which are fantastic. I listened to the one on supplements. I'm currently taking one aimed at menopause, along with some others for my joints, glucosamine and turmeric. I'm... Um, Am I better taking supplements individually to make sure I'm getting the RDA rather than this one? She's sent me a link to a particular supplement. She said, I generally use this company for my supplements, but just looking at their green tea and others, the doses seem lower than you recommend. Do you have a brand of supplements you recommend? I'm 44, have always had to work incredibly hard to lose weight. I've been to the doctors lots of times and like most of your listeners, get fobbed off and told to eat less. Over the last few years, the weight has increased, especially on my tummy. My eating habits haven't changed and I exercise regularly as I play hockey, which is very frustrating. I'm learning lots from your podcasts and making changes which are hopefully help. Well, I'm really glad to hear that you're enjoying the podcasts and that you start to make some changes. Let's have a look at this supplement and see what we think. I won't mention the brand name just because I'm not quite sure what the sort of liability type of side of things is there. So the first thing that I notice about this product is that it comes in tablet form and that is not ideal because tablets are really quite difficult for us to break down and digest and get the most and get those ingredients and nutrients out of the supplement. I've worked with people before who have had quite poor digestion and they've actually seen tablets come out in the toilet. 
which is quite apt for this episode. Um, and then when we switch them over to capsules, they haven't had that same issue. So capsules are much easier to digest. And, you know, if you're digesting okay, then maybe you'll digest these okay and absorb them. But with tablets, there tends to be a lot of binders and fillers and extra ingredients that are just not necessary. Capsules tend to be a fair bit cleaner. So that would be a main criticism of this product. Um, looking at the doses and the ingredients you know it looks like there's a nice combination of nutrients in there it does contain folic acid which is not the ideal form of folate ideally we like to see um uh, folate <laughs> or sometimes it's listed as tetrahydrofolate um which is kind of the more natural form of it the thing with a lot of companies um, particularly the more affordable companies, is that a lot of the nutrients that are in the supplements are made in a test tube and they're not actually the natural version of the vitamin or mineral or whatever it might be. Um, often it's a synthetic version and our bodies aren't as good at absorbing and utilizing those nutrients. So it's not always about the dose because if we've got the natural form or what's often called food form, then we actually absorb those nutrients much more readily. It's called bioavailability. Um, so we, we absorb those natural food form nutrients much more readily than we do the synthetic form. So um, when we've got the synthetic forms, we want to, you know, we're going to need higher doses, but it even then it's still not ideal to be having things in that form. So um, otherwise the, the, you know, what's in that supplement is fine in terms of the nutrients to support hormones. There isn't a particular brand that I recommend. Um, when I work with my clients, we're not tied to any particular brand. So we just, we recommend what makes sense for that individual. Um, we do have some go-to brands that we use. A lot of them are practitioner supplements. So they're, a lot of them aren't available to the general public and it's because they're stronger. Um, you know, it's not necessarily safe for people to be self-prescribing them if they don't need them. Um, but some brands that I really like that you can get uh, quite readily, a, a, um, brands like BioCare, Viridian, Cytoplan, three top, top brands, um, Nutri Advanced is another one. They, they are three really, really nice brands, um, good quality, generally use the food form version, particularly Viridian and Cytoplan. Um, and you'll see that they don't have super high doses on all their products, some of them do, um, but most of their products are, you know, fairly moderately dosed, and it's because you don't need super high doses when you've got that natural form. But yeah, there's certainly no harm in in taking a, you know, a menopause-focused multivitamin or a hormone-supportive sort of multi-nutrient product. You know, be aware that they may not address your hormonal issues because there are many, many different ways in which hormones can become imbalanced. You know, we've been talking about the gut today and that's a major way in which the gut can become imbalanced. And, you know, if there's something going on there that's causing you issues, then what's in these supplements isn't going to address those issues. You know, a multi-vitamin and mineral isn't going to address those issues. The other bits that are in there, like soy isoflavones and the other kind of phytoestrogens, aren't necessarily going to address the issues if it's coming from a gut problem um, or an inflammation problem, for example. So when you're taking these products, you are kind of throwing the spaghetti at the wall and hoping that some of it sticks. Um, there's no harm in doing that, but you just got to be aware that if it doesn't work, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad product. It just means that you're not meeting the need that your body has or addressing the actual underlying issue. So I hope that helps and gives you a little bit of food for thought. If you'd like to have your question answered on the podcast, then just email louise at louisedigbynutrition.com with your question and put podcast in the subject line and I will answer it as soon as I can. I am going to be dropping down the podcasts to every other week. You probably noticed that there wasn't a podcast last week. It's a lot to keep up with uh, releasing a podcast every week. And we're so busy at the moment. We've got lots of new clients 
and it's really important to us that we dedicate our time to our clients as a priority. So I'm going to be dropping down to every other week for the time being, but if you are missing your hit of my waffle, then you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook by searching at Louise Digby Nutrition because I post on there most days with tips and information and recipes and all sorts of things so i'll look forward to seeing you over there i'll be back in a couple of weeks if you're enjoying this podcast then make sure you head over to wherever you get your podcasts and hit like hit follow hit subscribe and leave a review thanks again and i'll see you next time